This is Umesh, History Faculty at Manifest IAS. And as part of our current jobs initiative, we have started covering some of the important cultural heritage sites of India which have been inscribed on UNESCO's Tangible Heritage Site List. And as part of this initiative, we have already covered the ancient Indian sites and today we are going to move towards the medieval Indian sites which are inscribed on the UNESCO's Tangible Heritage Site List. Okay, these are some of the sites which are very important for UPSC too as we have seen multiple number of questions asked by UPSC as part of this section as part of this section maybe there there are the most important sites with respect to culture too so that is the reason why we are covering it as part of this UNESCO World Heritage Site listing listing okay when it comes to medieval India we can have a look at what are the different aspects of medieval India which have been uh, different sites of medieval India which have been covered as part of this UNESCO World Heritage Site list and we have to bunch them together into different sections and we will be covering them in intelligible sections intelligible sections and when it comes to the uh, listing when it comes to the list in medieval India there are some sites like Hampi which is a completely preserved city of ancient India then apart from that the foundational city for Islamic architecture in India is the Kutub complex, the Kutub complex which hosts a range of Islamic architectural styles and then after that we have the Islamic city architecture of Gujarat which is covered in two sites which is Champaner Pavgada and historic city of Ahmedabad. These two are pre-Mughal in their architectural style. Then apart from that we have the classical Islamic architecture which is Mughal period which is uh, contained in the Humayun's tomb one and the second one is the Agra fort. The, sorry, not the Agra fort, the Taj Mahal. Then apart from that, the Islamic era forts are very very important for us. In fact, three forts have been inscribed in UNESCO World Heritage Tangible Sites which are Agra Fort, Fatehpur Sikri and Red Fort. These three we will be covering as part of one section. Then apart from that, we have the hill forts of Rajasthan which we will be doing a separate video on. Then apart from that, we have the late medieval city style and architecture which we can see it in case of the city, the pink city of Jaipur one. And apart from the pink city of Jaipur, we also see the same kind of some elements of modernity in Jantar Mantar complex. In Jantar Mantar complex too, which we will be covering as a separate section. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Now, if we have a look at uh, the first thing, the first thing that we are going to discuss today is the preserved city of medieval India, which is Hampi, which represents a continuity from ancient to medieval, which shows some of the elements of ancient Indian architectural style. Then along with that, it also shows some medieval Indian architectural styles. That is why it is a very, very important site. And when it comes to this, when it comes to this uh, world heritage site categorization, okay, the, the world heritage site categorization, it sites which are of outstanding universal value are selected as part of world heritage sites okay outstanding universal value that is the first and foremost criteria then apart from that there are nearly 10 criteria for being selected as a unesco world heritage site of these 10 criteria these are some of the things which have been listed human creative genius it should represent interchange of values testimony to culture tradition and as part of our uh, videos after finishing each video we are going to talk about which of these criteria does a given site or city uh, city is categorized under or which has been recognized under which of these following categories we will have a look at. So now we will start with the city of Hampi. When, uh, when it comes to the city of Hampi it has one more name which is known as a Vijayanagara. The Vijayanagara city or Hampi city it has a very great past great past and in fact it is a, uh, one of the most significant cities in the entire world during medieval India. According to some travelers it is also considered to be the largest city in the world at the point of time and it is also a major hub of trade and commerce during medieval period. When it comes to this city, when it comes to this city there have been multiple number of questions in UPSC with respect to the Vijayanagara architecture one, the Hampi as a city then apart from that there were also history based questions on Hampi as a city. When we look at the foundation of this city in the city has been founded by the brothers one is Harihara and the second one is Bukaraya. So these two people who initially were working in the army of Muhammad bin Tughlaq working in the army of Muhammad bin Tughlaq they came down south in order to suppress rebellion but instead of suppressing the rebellion they became the leaders of the rebellion and after becoming the leaders of the rebellion they established their capital city at a place known as Vijayanagara. This spot has been chosen by sage Vidyaranya. 
in fact he converted these two Hariharan Bukka from Islam to Hinduism and after that they have established their city at the banks of river Tungabhadra this has also been a question they have established the city on the river bank of Tungabhadra river and it has been established by three people Harihara, Bukka and Sage Vidaranya so this is how this city has a hori past hori past now when we look at the basic outlay of the city basic outlay of the city the city is in fact it is the outlay of the city is based on a very very strong fortification wall system in fact now also we can see some of the remains of the fortification walls and in fact in medieval period in medieval period one of the foreign travelers by the name of Abdul Rajak when he visited the city he said that there are nearly seven concentric forts in Vijayanagara city seven concentric forts for sake of protection of the city seven concentric forts will be there and in the center of it the city has been placed in the center of the which the city has been placed and in in some of these fortifications even agricultural fields were present because whenever there is a seize of the fort this fort should be self-sustainable this is one of the major ideas which which is present in the Vijayanagara city one of the major ideas which is present in Vijayanagara city and after this seventh concentric walls when you come to the urban planning in Vijayanagara city it has been divided into it has been divided into nearly three parts the entire city has been divided into three parts which is the sacred center is one then apart from the sacred center you have this is the sacred center one second I'm sorry uh, first we have the sacred center and apart from the sacred center we have the royal center that is the second one and the third one is the urban core so these are the three parts of Vijayanagara as a city the first one is a sacred center second one is royal center and the third one is urban core when it comes to the sacred center all the prominent temples of the Vijayanagara empire they are present at the sacred center okay then apart from that, the royal center it hosts a range of palaces then along with the palaces there are some temples too in the royal center then apart from that some of the uh, major secular architectural elements are present in the royal center then the third one is urban core which hosts the markets in Vijayanagara empire which were very very prominent at one point of time and apart from the market centers it also hosts it also hosts some of the uh, important uh, market uh, it also is a residential area for the entire city and when you look at have a look at the Ampi city layout I told you that seven concentric walls will be there and after this crossing seven concentric wall you have three areas which is a sacred center then the second one is royal center and the third one is urban core now we will have a look at the architecture because architecture is just an intelligent outlay of a space how the space is being used in an intelligent fashion is something which is architecture and when it comes to this architectural style of Vijayanagara it is basically based on a Dravidian architectural style but it also represents some of the interaction with the Islamic architectural elements too how we will have a discussion when you come to the basic uh, temple architectural style in Vijayanagara period it fulfills all the Dravidian architectural style features all the Dravidian architectural style features and it is also sometimes represented or known as the peak of Dravidian architecture can be seen in Vijayanagara Empire and as we have discussed in our last previous videos too in a Dravidian architectural style what are the basic elements the basic elements in a Dravidian architectural style okay are these which is the Antrala is one then apart from that there is <coughs> the uh, there is the Garbhagriha then above which there is a Vimana above the Vimana there is a Shikara then apart from the Shikara there is a Gopura which is the entrance gateway then there will be numerous subsidiary shrines there will be Mandapas which are attached to the central shrine and sometimes uh, some of the Mandapas are also outside the central shrine too so this is the Mandapa one second this is the Mandapa then these are the subsidiary shrines okay as you can see it very clearly here and along with that there is a Pushkarani too there is a Pushkarani Pushkarani means a water tank a Pushkarani is a water tank one second <coughs> then along with the Pushkarani we can also see that in Vijayanagara period there is fortification walls which are known as a Prakara walls inside the temples Prakara walls inside the temples so all of these are the standard Dravidian architectural features and they are also present in Vijayanagara Empire Vijayanagara Empire too and when it comes to the temples of Vijayanagara period there are some very very prominent temples like Virupaksha temple is one the second one is Vitala temple then apart from the Virupaksha and Vitala temple we also have temples like uh, the Ganesha temple which is present in uh, Vijayanagara then Pampa Devi temple okay all of these temples are present in the sacred center in Vijayanagara empire and when you have a look at the prominent architectural features of Vijayanagara okay we'll just have a look at the prominent architectural features and these prominent architectural features are 
First thing is the stone which has been used is a hard stone granite and there is an enormous amount of horizontal elaboration with respect to temple. Inside the temple itself, the temple has a numerous subsidiary structures inside the temple, inside the prakara walls. That is why it is known as horizontal elaboration. The temple has been completely embellished. Okay, In fact, there is an equivalence between a god and the king in Vijayanagara Empire. That is the reason why the god is also embellished with all possible niceties of life okay on niceties of life that is the reason why that there is one subsidiary shrine for the woman deity which is known as aman shrine then apart from aman shrine there are numerous different kinds of mandapas kalyana mandapas ranga mandapas garuda mandapas raya goprams all of these are the subsidiary shrines or the subsidiary structures which are present inside the temple aman shrine is a subsidiary shrine then apart from aman shrine there are multiple number of mandapas and in each mandapa a particular event with respect to the god is being covered with respect to the god is being covered and then apart from that uh, there is a, this uh, tradition of construction of raya goprams and in fact during the vijayanagara period which has been as we have discussed in the cholan period too that goprams started becoming a larger than the central vimana okay the gopram the entrance gateway is much much bigger than the uh, much much bigger than the central shrine okay i'll show you an image of virupaksha temple which clearly shows that see this is the virupaksha temple and this is the central shrine and this this is the gopra okay one second i'll mark it out for you this is the central shrine okay which is the vimana which is present then this is the gopra the gopra structure is far bigger than the central shrine so this is how the vijayanagara empire's architecture temple architecture is predominantly present then apart from that the some other elements some other elements in the temple architectural style is at the ends okay this is double flexure which is present in the cornice at the ends of the temple at the ends of the temple i'll show it for you okay at the ends of the temple see this is known as the cornice okay this edge is known as the cornice and here you have double buildings double buildings which are present at this edge then apart from this we also have a structure called pushpotika which is present at the edges of the temple which is present at the edges of the temple so these are the two important things which are present as part of the temple temple and one more peculiar feature is there is musical pillars which are present in this temple structure and particularly the vitala temple in Vijayanagara is being restored by the Archaeological Survey of India and they are planning to conduct a musical uh, rendition with respect with the help of these musical pillars. Okay, that is a, a pro project under process right now. Then apart from that, there are numerous independent sculptures too which are present as part of Vijayanagara Empire. Then apart from that, you have standalone sculptures which are present as part of Vijayanagara Empire. Okay, uh, standalone sculptures like the sculpture of the Lion God, the Lion God that is Narasimha. Then apart from Nandi images, all of these things are present and Virupaksha Temple which is present in Hampi it is also embellished with numerous paintings okay brilliant paintings you can see in Vijayanagara empire virupaksha temple this is one of the paintings which i have shown so you have a mural tradition apart from that you have brilliant sculpture then brilliant dravidian architecture all of these things are part of the vijayanagara city part of the vijayanagara city and in fact then apart from that if you have a look at the structures okay this is the this is structure the first image that i am showing this is known as the maharnavami dibba here the the sara festival is celebrated with full grandeur and pomp in vijayanagara empire okay this is the maharnavami dibba it is a very high stage and then apart from that the second one here it is the lotus temple and here we can see a clear interaction between the islamic ideas of architecture and hindu ideas because it is a mixture of a tribute and arcuate features when it comes to this see this uh, entire thing is engraved arches which are in middle medieval development and it is islamic architectural style the arch is engraved it has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, internal um, what do you call it? A uh, lot of uh, it, it has a lot of uh, lot of design which is present that is known as engraving. The design type is known as engraving. Then apart from that, on top we see clear tribute structure which is a typical Hindu architectural feature. Typical Hindu architectural feature. So it shows that it is also an interaction among human ideas. Human ideas are also seen. To be interacting at this place and this is one more important structure which is known as the elephant stables and here too we see alternating domes and a tribute structure this is a clear sign of the interaction of human ideas one on one side islamic architectural style then on the other there is a tribute style and you can also see arches here present in the elephant stables so this is the kind of interaction which is present in vijayanagara empire then apart from this if we have a look about the other structures other structures which are present as part of this so this is an independent mandapa which is present in vitala temple which is present in the vitala temple this is this entire mandapa is constructed in the form of a stone ratha okay stone ratha this is one more important thing about vijayanagara architecture vijayanagara architecture then apart from this if you see 
apart from this you, if you see the this is the independent pillar okay the pillar which is present in the vijayanagara empire it is made in the format of it is made in the format of yali yali is a mystical animal a mythical animal which contains features of nearly seven animals so in this format every pillar which is present in the vijayanagara empire it can be a stand alone sculpture in its own right to so then when it comes to the exploration of vijayanagara city the vijayanagara as a city it has been completely abandoned after the battle of talikota battle of talikota and after that uh, the first britisher who tried to explore the vijayanagara as a city is colin mckenzie who is the first survey general of india this is a important uh, information for preliminary then apart from that there is also a very famous book which has been written on the city of vijayanagara which is known as the forgotten empire the forgotten empire is one more brilliant book which has been written by robert swivel on the vijayanagara empire then apart from this uh, if you have a look at okay now uh, we will see like which of the fe these features are fulfilled with respect to the vijayanagara as a city okay so definitely it is a, a site which shows the interchange of human values it is also a site which is brilliant for its creative genius then it is also a testimony to a cultural tradition and it is also very very significant structure in human history and it is not a continuous settlement so we cannot put it at uh, in that so the it really fulfills four criteria with respect to the unesco world heritage site list so this finishes the hampi as a city and all the possible facts are present in these slides along with the diagrams and this is the explanation for the hampi as a city so thank you